In the last video, we had a look at how we can set up the development environment and create a hello world example. In this video, I want to concentrate on the folder structure that you see after your very first install of React. If we take a look at the file tree under my React app, you can see that we have three files, specifically node modules, public and SRC, which stands for source as well as four files, the git ignore, the package lock, the package, and the readme files. To begin, I want to start off with a node modules folder together with the package.json file, because both of these are very closely related. As the name node modules suggests, this file contains all the individual modules that you have installed. If I click on a small arrow next to the node modules, a long list of installed modules is revealed. The ones you see in this list all came with the initial installation of React. Whenever you choose to install new modules using the Node Package Manager, they will be installed within the Node Modules folder. Now let's have a look how the Node Modules are related to the package.json file. In the package.json file, you can see that we have some rudimentary information about our application, such as the name, the version, and a couple of dependencies. Those are perhaps the three most important things in this file. Whenever you use a new package within the code of your project, a new dependency to that package is listed within the dependencies list. Now I want to briefly show you how the package.json file and the node modules folder are related. So let's assume for a moment that you want to uninstall a node package. And as an example, we're going to take the React DOM module that you can see in the dependencies right here. The module is listed within the dependencies because it is used throughout the project code of the sample project that you get with the installation of React. Besides that, you'll also see if I go on the dropdown of the node modules and look for React DOM, then you will see that there is a folder called exactly that, React DOM, and it is right over here. We can proceed to uninstall this package by going to the terminal and then writing npm uninstall react minus dom. And when we confirm this, two things are going to happen. First, the module is going to disappear from the dependencies. And second, the module is going to disappear from the node modules. So let me confirm this and pay close attention to the folder and the dependencies. Now you'll see that once the uninstallation finishes, both of them have disappeared. Similarly, if I now go ahead and reinstall the package React DOM by typing in npm install react minus DOM and then confirm, you'll see that once the installation finishes, the dependency is added back and the module is added back into the node modules folder. All right, so now that we have clarified the node module folder, the package JSON file, and the relationship between them, let's move on to the public folder. Whatever you store within the public folder is going to be accessible via the URL bar in your browser. When you first install React, there's going to be a couple of images in this folder, such as the fav icon and the two logos that you see over here. Besides that, you'll also see the index.html file, which is at the moment an empty template file. You'll usually use this for adding web fonts, meta tags, or even Google Analytics. Looking further through this folder, you'll also see the manifest.json, which provides some information on the application. And this information becomes relevant whenever the user installs the web application to the home screen of his device. 
The final file that we have in here is the robots.txt file. And this file tells web crawlers, such as the one from Google, which websites within your web application are allowed to be crawled and which ones are not. Now that we've covered all the individual files within the public folder, let's move on to the source folder. The source folder is going to contain all the individual components of your React application. You can see here, for example, the app.js component. It comes pre-installed with the initial installation of React. In addition to that, the source folder also contains the styling for the individual components. So you can see not only do we have the app.js, which is the component itself, we also have the app.css, which contains the styling for the app.js component. Further below, you can see the index.js, which is the entry point to JavaScript. And above that, you can see the index.css, which has the corresponding styling. The app test.js file and the setup test.js file are both relevant when it comes to testing your application. But especially if you're a beginner starting out with React, these two files are going to be less relevant for you. The final file worthy to be mentioned is the report web vitals, which is a file used to track and measure the performance of your website. Moving out of the source folder, the next thing worthy to be mentioned is the git ignore. This file is usually used to ignore some files within your project from being version controlled with git. Then comes the package lockjson, which is automatically generated for any operations where the node package manager modifies the node modules or the package JSON. And then at the very end, we also have a readme file where you can add some general information about the application. This is all you need to know about the folder structure within the default React application. If this video helped you, make sure to leave it a like and we'll see each other in the next video.